people, it's your girl Adiola. Finally, my people, I think that one Nigerian governor is watching this show. Yes, yes, you know, do well. <laughs> governor El Rufai, are you there now? Have you guys heard that primary and secondary school education is now free in Kaduna State? No, be small matter, Madam El Rufai, you must have been watching, you know, do well. How much would that save the parents, by the way? 3.7 billion naira every year. That is what I'm talking about. You see, you see, those parents will say a prayer for Mr. Governor, no, be so, eh, eh. And um, they've also started repairing school infrastructures and supplying new furniture as well as school uniforms for the pupils in fact they are now feeding them they're giving them meals i'm like yes teach them and feed them well that is what i'm talking about i'm so excited that the contract of making school uniforms is now being awarded to local tailors instead of people that know the orgas at the top and that is what i'm talking about all these things by the way my dear how much will all these things cost mr governor <laughs> 14 billion naira, right. you know, do it. God, God bless you. Wait a minute, 14 billion naira, that is about uh, 70 million dollars. No, be so, yes, yes, yes. Uh, are you trying to tell me that uh, people like uh, Madam Madweke that alleg allegedly knew? Don't quote me, yes. People like Madweke that stole 9.3 billion dollars. People like that, they would take care of the whole uh, school uniform and school fees of all public schools in several states. Chai! My people, you see what I'm saying? Eh? If El Rufai is doing this with 70 million, divide 9 billion dollars by 70 million uh, dollars. How much is that? 120. Damn, that is just the 9 billion, oh, not the 9.30, 128. How many states do we have in Nigeria? 36. This state will go down times two and there will be leftover to take care of university students. No, be so. That is uh, if truly she stole the money, you know. <laughs> My sister, you know, do I hope you are feeling better. A lot of people have been praying for you. We can't wait, honestly. For you to come back to nigeria yes so how is your governor doing in your state is education free in your state eh? <laughs> with 14 billion naira it can be free depending on how big your state is kaduna is actually listed as the third most populated state in nigeria so if you are not from kano or lagos there's no reason why your government cannot do this you know free education i honestly cannot wait for the time that Public education will be free in Lagos. Make it free. Yes, make it free. It's already free in Kano State. Yes, so oh, they are, are they still implementing? They are still imp they need to implement. Implement on time so you understand. It's also free in Imo State. No, be so. My people, my people. Yes, your people, your people. You know, do well. But, but why is Mr. Governor wearing school uniform? Che! Ah, why now? We can't get to the point without you wearing school uniform. Ah, you don't need to. My people, I hope you are not thinking that when I become first lady that I will be putting on school uniform my mommies and my dad is watching this show this next story is about one man like this they said is the governor of Oshun state um governor what is wrong with you take it down take, take down the photo as well trying to embarrass me in front of my people and then the governor of Edo state also said that he will soon make public schools free in his state. By the way, did you guys hear about the transformation of public schools in Edo State? Hmm, I'm telling you, I was reading in the paper recently that 75% of the public schools in Edo State have been renovated. 75%! You guys need to see the pictures. I was blown away. These are public primary and secondary schools, so eh? How would they not say a prayer for their governor? In fact, no more black boards in classroom too. Now it is white boards with markers. I'm telling you, the man is transforming the schools. And according to a video sponsored by the Edo State Government, they've built fences for 52 schools. They've renovated, as of 2012, more than 92 schools. When public schools look like this, do you have any doubt that students would perform better? I don't. No wonder I've been hearing that the public schools in Edo State are now performing better than private schools in the WIAC examination. In the last exam, government school uh, pupils did better than right. private schools. And of course, I'm sure that education is free in Ekiti State. No, be so because the way that they are governor, they yab everybody left and right. He must be doing something, which is uh, what Yoruba called Takutaku Meje Yayamefa. My dear, what is this? Hey, the devil is a liar. He increased school fees. Bring me my glasses. Hey, the, the man increased primary school fees from 600 naira to 800 naira. Ah, okay, and then he increased secondary school fees from 1,000 naira to 2,400 naira. Ah, 
my dear. That is more than double K. No, it's okay. While some people are making education free in their state. Hey, Tayo, say, hey. Apart from drinking Ogogoro and Pam Wild, my people tell me exactly what is this man doing? Okay, yeah, that is true. He also buys pepper. Yes, and yes, he buys palm oil. <laughs> and uh, oh, yes, he also buys fish for pepper soup. I guess that is what he's doing. But ah, this is very, very sad. My people in the kitchen state. Eh? You are doing cheated. No, be me talk more. And speaking of Oshio Male and uh, Okorocha. My people, my people. Stop it. Ah, my people, my people. Is it true that the two of them don't want to declare their assets publicly or I'm just reading stuff on the internet? Eh? You guys better declare your assets. Yes, the two of you. Ah, better declare and publicly know. Publicly declare your assets. What do you have to hide? Is it that you cannot explain how you made your money? Or do you have a skeleton in your cupboard? Eh? I'm keeping my eyes on you too. Yes, call it the whole call governor. She or Mali, he cannot say he doesn't remember me. <laughs> how are you doing, my governor? Declare your assets publicly. Publicly, you know, you not too well, you not too well. Regards to that, your beautiful wife. That woman, that lady, she's very beautiful. And while we're talking about assets, have you heard? Gang, gang, hey, gang, gang. I'm trying not to dance. Is it true that uh, the conduct bureau filed 13 count corruption charges against the Saraki of Eloran, the one and only Saraki? They charged him with false assets declaration. This is the number three in the country, oh, the Senate president. Apparently, when he was governor, he lied. Not me. I wasn't the one that said it. The Bureau of Conduct. Apparently, he lied about his assets. Why would anybody lie about their assets? Eh? Maybe they cannot account for how they made the money or how they own the properties, which means that some kind of corruption practices must have taken place. Wait, wait, wait. What did he say? Did he say something? <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> Let's marry part of it. Most of them are frivolous and not true. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mr. Senate President, are you trying to say some of these charges are true? <laughs> this one I are saying most of them are not true. Eh? Are you saying that some of them are true? Eh? As far as we are concerned, we are not shaking. We focus on what we have come to do in the interest of the country. In the interest of which country, oh daddy? Uh -uh. There is God now. Some of us, eh, we may be little babies, but we know what is happening in Nigeria. Eh? For those that may not understand what this means, let me interpret for you. In case you don't know what the man is saying. He's saying that, do you know who I am? I am the Saraki of Ilori. So you cannot touch me. That, my people, is what the man is saying. Wait a minute. Is that his Twitter handle? Yeah. Anytime you try to fight corruption or insist that the right thing should be done, the system will always come after you. Have you? Ha! Ha! Me and Cuckoo know that nothing will come out of all of this. So many big people have gotten away with corruption charges in Nigeria. Not today. <laughs> Not be today now. Before, before, uncle. <laughs> Even with the new administration. Many people that were arrested by the EFCC recently have also been released. I know that some people have been probed though. And I know they are making progress. But uh, <laughs> the only thing that I'm sure of is if you are a nobody in Nigeria, they would even think twice before putting you in prison. But so long as you are a big man, <laughs> that is where you can say, oh, we are not shaking when there are 13 charges of corruption count against you. <laughs> but you guys know I don't know anything. I mean, what do I know? I'm just a small girl. <laughs> no, but so guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So we're still waiting on Mr. President to name his minister. So you know this list has been going on. People are talking. Where is Amechi's name on the list? Hey, me, I don't know yet. I'm waiting. We'll take a critical look at the periphery of the people that are on the list. Say so you understand. Not today when Mr. President releases the names of the people. Although so far I'm disappointed that Dr. Damages is still not on the list. What is going on? The man just celebrated this 200th episode. 200th episode. And these people cannot even make him a minister. Minister of out there is God now. Take it easy, my brother. Let me speak for you. <laughs> Even though you yab me in every of your episode, <laughs> there is God not to spoil. By now, I'm sure that you've all heard that La Casera fired 780 workers. 780. And it's all about union or no union. The company claimed that its premises was invaded by the National Union of Food, Beverages, and Tobacco employees who tried forcing their employees to sign up to be union members. La Casera claimed that the union harassed their employees, beating up those that didn't sign 
sign up. Meanwhile, the union said that was not true, that for 12 years, this company, La Casera, which is owned by Indians, by the way, it's actually a Spanish drink, but in Nigeria, it's owned by Indians. They are saying that the company has prevented their employees from joining the union for 12 years. And when the employees decided to start their own union, the company fired the chairman of the union and other members. I don't know who's telling the truth, okay? The case is now in court, but I can't process the fact that they fired 780 people in one day. I, I cannot process that in my mind. Something ain't right. 780 people just lost their livelihood in one day. Their source of income is gone. You bet some of them have families to take care of. Why is it okay for foreigners to treat Nigerians like trash in our own country? Did I tell you that the insurance that La Casera had for those workers only covered 3,000 naira worth of treatment? 3,000. What can you do with 3,000 naira? If it exceeds 3,000 naira, forget it. And no family member is included in that insurance. And it's not just La Casera, by the way. MTN in Mayfair, Lagos has been subjecting their work to inhumane treatment as well. Although it's a South African company, it is now under a new management owned by Indians. Once again, my Indian people, what is wrong with you? The fact that our skin color is different doesn't mean that you're better in any way. So stop mistreating people, especially in their own country. The new management has a new and crazy contract that I can't even tell you about. How do you add to the number of hours that somebody has to work and you will not add to the person's salary. Like, does that even make sense to you? Like, really? The new management came in and they canceled all leave. So you can no longer go on leave. When people started shouting on the internet, they said, okay, you can take one day in a month. I'm like, are, are you serious? As soon as the new management came, everybody on maternity leave was told to resume with immediate alacrity. Even if you had a baby that day, you have to resume or you will lose your job. I'm trying to understand the categorical dysfunction of the cosmosis behind such catastrophic reasoning sure you understand who does that i read the story of one lady who just had a baby and she has to leave home at 4 20 a.m in the morning to get to work on time and she won't be back till midnight because of the commute she's a new mom for god's sake in fact i spoke with one of those workers and she told me that adiola in one day alone the management fired 11 people without any notice sometimes they'll fire three people in one day sometimes they'll fire two people she said the way it is right now you go to work with the mindset that that you never know today may be your last day at work and now they're hiring people under the new contract and they are paying those new people half of what they used to pay us so in other words they're trying to get rid of us so they can replace us with the new people that will take half of what they are paying us you know that employment is very very scarce in nigeria meanwhile the branches at akpapa ikoyi vgc they still run the normal shift and on top of all of this they cancel their health insurance hmo so you work 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 no leave and if you get i mean there's one day of leave in a month. And if you get sick, no insurance. What is the definition of slavery again? Exactly, yeah, that one. That's the definition of slavery. If not that I have some Indian friends, because of that, I know that not all of them are racist. I will be really pissed off by now. What is wrong with you? Indians in Nigeria, get it together. Get it together. Eh? Making me upset. And then I heard that those that were fired, were fired because they posted the story online or because they commented on the story on Ireland. Can you believe that? Can you believe? Now the management is monitoring people on Ireland to see if any of the employees would comment. You have been threatened, you have been mishandled, and you cannot talk about it. That's what they are saying. Better tell somebody that knows somebody that is connected to the August at the top that this is what the Indian companies are doing to people in Nigeria. Enough of foreigners mistreating Nigerians on Nigerian soil, y'all. Ah, making me upset. We are not saying that they shouldn't do business or live in Nigeria. They are welcome. Eh? But by the time the Nigerian government wakes up, it may be too late. Remember the Lebanese employer that beat up his seven month pregnant employee until she lost the baby last year remember that did anything ever happen to him till now yeah i don't think so you see what i'm talking about if your government is not fighting for you inside your country how can you expect them to fight for their citizens facing discrimination abroad but you guys know i don't know much keep me updated my people at mtn my people at la casera let me know what is happening guess what i'm just keeping it real <laughs> moving on to zimbabwe <laughs> oh my god Ah, it's okay, it's okay. There is no cause for alarm. I'm just a little, ah, I'm just a little perplexed and worried. Ah, who's in charge? What do you mean where? In Zimbabwe. Who's in charge in Zimbabwe? Look it up. Eh? No, no, no. Mugabe is no longer in charge. My people, how is it possible that Mr. President will read the wrong speech from start to finish and not at any moment realize that he was reading the wrong speech if everything is okay? 
Do you understand? Yes. Instead of a speech officially opening parliament, Mugabe read his State of the Nation address, the one that he had already delivered on August 25. He was supposed to outline the legislative agenda and highlight bills that are to be debated and to also officially open the house. None of that happened in this speech that he read. <laughs> the sad thing is the right speech had already been handed out to reporters and you know key people in the audience before the event started. So every one of them was like, where? What? Wait, wait, I mean, is this man reading the right thing? <laughs> the whole time people were trying to interrupt him that, Oh God, you are reading the wrong speech. <laughs> he didn't even budge. The man read through the whole thing. Half hour, he was just, and he did not at any time occur to him that this is the wrong thing. I'm telling you, age is starting to catch up with the man. And these people are not letting him rest. It's not fair. It is very, very, ah, how can they be so cruel? Eh? The man is 91, let him rest now. So you see why I'm, why I'm worried? Because I don't know who's in charge. I mean, seriously, if the man doesn't realize he's reading the wrong speech, how can you convince me that he's the one in charge of the country? Eh? Eh? Ah! Don't tell me. Don't tell me that this woman is in charge. Eh? The devil is alive. God forbid, that would not be good. Hey, by the way, before this happened, opposition MPs started getting death threats on their cell phones, so warning them that they should not disrupt Mugabe's speech or heckle the man, and that they should not demand that he should step down. Can you imagine? Let me read part of it. Warning, immunity ends in parliament. <laughs> if you step outside, you become an ordinary citizen. Do the wise thing and don't disturb proceedings in parliament. So these are the text messages that they were sending to opposition MPs that don't do anything funny. <laughs> if you do, you will become an ordinary citizen and anything can happen to you. One of them posted this threat on her Facebook page. So I thought if opposition members cannot talk without being threatened, hopefully men of God in Zimbabwe can talk to Mr. President and not be so uh, mm, prophet. Hey. Prophet my Gaia, are you serious? This is a joke. <laughs> the man that paid fifty thousand dollars for Grace Mugabe's book. I read that article. Forget it. He basically said that Mugabe is doing a great job and that he's a fountain of wisdom and that the economic crisis that they are facing right now in Zimbabwe is just a phase. Soon it will pass, like it passed in Germany. You see why I'm genuinely concerned for Zimbabwe. Some men of God are not even telling the truth to Mr. President. Eh? Election is happening next year. Oh, God's willing, change will come to Zimbabwe. Yes, I can't wait. Take it down. This woman cannot be president. Don't, don't do a terrible joke. This is very, very serious. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Burkina Faso. Yeah. It's so unbelievable what's happening there right now. Presidential guards, some soldiers loyal to former president Blaise Compare interrupted a cabinet meeting last Wednesday and they detained all ministers. All ministers and the prime minister. And of course, the interim president, Michael Kafando. In short, they took over governmental, they declared a coup, and guess what? They started killing young people, those of them that were trying to protest. By the weekend, more than a dozen people have been killed. A friend of mine barely escaped alive. He said that they burnt down his properties. I'm just glad that he made it out, but there are so many others who were not able to escape. Many people have been arrested, and those that were not arrested have been intimidated. I can't believe it. They recently had a massive protest and kicked out their president, Blaise Compari, after 27 years in power. Elections have been fixed for next month to October 11th, and now this happened. Can you imagine why, why? When will we get it right? Especially in many of our French-speaking African countries. When would we get it right? Do you know that the president of uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo is also doing the same thing? He's clinging on to power. Last week, he expelled seven senior political figures because they signed a letter urging him, urging him, begging him not to cling on to power after his tenure expires next year. He expelled them. Like, who does that? Joseph Kabila has been in power since 2001, oh, that is 14 years ago, and he is required by the constitution to step down next year. But to him, 14 years is not enough. Meanwhile, his father was the president before him. That was 1987 to 2001 when he was killed. So exactly when is it enough? I wonder what Thomas Sankara would say to all of this, you know, if he were to be alive. There's this piece I did about him. Make sure you check it out. He's considered one of the best presidents in Africa and he's from Burkina Faso. I wish Burkina Faso would have another revolution like they did during Thomas Sankara's time. So my Burkinabe people, please keep me updated about whatever happens. You know, let me know what's going on. Be safe wherever you are. I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.
If I read emails today, these pictures of the General Hospital in Yobe have been circulating on the internet. Can somebody please talk to Mr. Governor in Yobe or the Minister of Health or whoever? Ah, how in the world is it possible that this is the General Hospital? There is God. You are treating people in a place like this. Ah, no, no. Something must be done before I become first lady. Do something because you and I will not be friends. Second of all, I heard that they now have electricity in Meduguri. Oh, well, oh, hey, oh, well, ah. I'm telling you, you never know who is watching this show. My people in Meduguri, you not do well. I hope you are now watching the show very well. Eh? My first email today is from Azuka from Delta State. And this person says, hi, Adeola, I'm from Oguashuku in Delta State. We've not had electricity for over three years. What? And it seems that nobody knows about it. So I just wanted to share this. By the way, that's the village of Okonjo Iweala, the former finance minister. <laughs> And her father is even the OB of the community. Hey, my photo and my God. Put Madame on speed down. <coughs> Hello? Madame Ngozi, you know do it. It's your daughter. What? Hello? Hello? What's wrong with this line? Hello? I can't hear. Hey, uh -uh, there's nothing wrong with this one. Madame, I can hear you correctly. Madame, can you hear me? No, I can't hear mm, with this. Let me ask again. Madame, can you hear me? No. You are answering my question and you cannot hear me. Madam, there is God, bro. There is God in everything that we are doing, bro. Madam, we know that you, you don't live in the village, but I have viewers from your village that need this electricity so they can watch the news. Please fix their electricity for them. As a former finance minister, I'm sure you will know people that will know people that will be able to fix the electricity. You know, do it, Madam Ngozi. <laughs> God bless you. And fix your phone. I don't know what was wrong. So last week I was in Michigan, and I happened to sit next to a Kipinero viewer in the plane by the name Adidin Oladokun, and he told me about the Association for Credible Leadership in Nigeria, ACLN, and I just would like to give them a shout out for advocating for true democracy and transparency in Nigeria, even from abroad. Kudos to you guys. Kudos to all the members. I also I also want to wish two wonderful viewers a happy married life from the Federal University of Technology in Oweri. Akwari Onyekachi Godswill and his lovely wife. Congratulations to you guys. Wishing you a happy married life. This is a beautiful picture. And before I go, I cannot believe it, but my Oga at the top, the only doctor that can heal the whole of Nigeria, Dr. Onjakiri Damages, is celebrating his 200th episode this week. Yes, oh yes, yes. So on behalf of myself and of course, Kolido Naduel, we just would like to congratulate the good doctor only a few people can aspire to prosper the wire that you have inspired in your audience eh? continue to prosper in all your prospects that is from chapter 419 of the very famous book gentility is a virtue that is for dr damages he will understand it. it's an inside joke all right guys that's all the time that i have for emails today please keep sending your emails to adiola.keepneyro at gmail.com all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it real right up in here until next week i must see y'all later peace out <laughs>